Do you think the students know that they have such a unique opportunity at RPI with the quantum computer? I, I think they know maybe better than the rest of us know. They, they realize that this is very unique in higher ed, very unique in the world. They want to learn. They want to learn more about this. I had mentioned the quantum club that was a year and a half ago at maybe 40 students is today at 400 students. The quantum computer behind me is the only one that lives inside a chapel. It was installed here at Rensselaer Polytech Institute in 2024. And although the Gothic architecture and the stone floors and the light shining through the stained glass windows is a very striking setting for a quantum computer, that's not why I'm here today. In this series, we're going to be visiting institutions that are working with IBM quantum machines and seeing the impact these machines have had in their work and their research and in the community. Our first visit is here at RPI, where we'll be examining how this quantum computer has changed the landscape of research and education here on campus. We'll be examining the impact at a few different levels, starting with John Kolb. John Kolb is the VP and the head of RPI's Future of Computing Institute. Here's John. The quantum computer is so intriguing to this community and to this community of students. These are students, for the most part, that are interested in science, technology, engineering, in math, 85% of our undergraduates are in that category. And so quantum is something that they understand, but maybe don't quite understand, and they'd like to understand better. So, you know, voila, you have the motivation before you do anything else. They want to learn. They want to learn more about this. I had mentioned the quantum club that was a year and a half ago at maybe 40 students is today at 400 students. So our students have self-identified that they're interested in this and they want to learn more even outside the classroom. Do you think the students know that they have such a unique opportunity at RPI with the quantum computer? I, I think they know maybe better than the rest of us know. They, they realize that this is very unique in higher ed, very unique in the world. And that means a lot to them. It's a point of pride. The quantum club is interesting. What is a quantum club? What, is, what do they do? Well, they meet once a week and discuss quantum computing, and they bring in faculty members or researchers or others to talk about, well, where is quantum computing going? And I guess it's fair to say that a lot of the faculty are learning alongside with them too, right? Yeah, I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, we're a learning community, so sometimes we all want to believe it's the faculty teaching the students, and sometimes we learn a lot from our students who are teaching the rest of us. And in terms of research initiatives, because I understand how you can use it and, like, develop a curriculum around it in a classroom setting, but in terms of, like, research for faculty and grad students, how has that gone? Yeah, let me let me back up a second, though, and give you an example that from the summer we have an investment firm that works with our guy called Rock Creek, and they hired two summer interns for six weeks, two of our undergraduate students that were in the, the quantum club. And those two students came in and started working on quantum algorithms, particularly with distribution analysis, distribution of portfolios and things like that. The things that we might normally do, Monte Carlo simulations, things like that. And they came up with five new algorithms that they posited in the IBM financial libraries for quantum. In only six weeks? In six weeks. Wow. And before they started, there were only 12 in there. So they added, it was either five or six. I think they added six maybe to get it up to 18 in six weeks of work. <laughs> Two of our students, undergraduates, blew away the investment firm and convinced the investment firm that they needed to be paying more attention to quantum and so on. That's two of our students just doing their thing. Yeah. And probably convince them that they should have a job after we're out of so. right. Yes. And and then going forward to your other question, we have much more sophisticated people doing things like in thermal chemistry and so on, and doing some things to get curve fitting and so on with matrices that just go out of the, out of sight, you know, from essentially two million points that you might have on a high performance computer to like nine trillion points that you would have in a matrix that a quantum computer can handle, but traditional computing just couldn't handle. And so one of our researchers is just ecstatic that he's getting a lot of time on the quantum system to prove that this is working this way. And if he had to wait, he wouldn't be able to do the benchmarking that he's doing right now. And it seems to me, but correct me if I'm wrong, that the research being done at RPI has been very interdisciplinary. Like it's not just the physicists who are doing all of the experiments. 
I, I think one of the things you'll find about RPI is the size is interesting. We're large enough to have an impact, but small enough to be still low walls between disciplines and so on. So our engineers are always talking to mathematicians or talking to other folks in different domains. And I think that's really important, especially when you're learning a new field like quantum computing and those constructs between the different disciplines doesn't really exist in the research. Yeah, and in fact, if I back up, one of the things that computer science essentially had some of its initial founding in was the disciplines of mathematics, physics, and logical engineering. And so computer science by itself was an interdisciplinary science as it came into being. And I think that's what we're going to see here is new sciences, new techniques, whether it's called computational, quantum science, supercomputing. I think we're going to see that. It's going to be very interdisciplinary. Do you have any particular areas of research that you're most excited about? I think there's some that seem to lend themselves better to quantum. You know, the chemistry is areas, large molecule, drug discovery, those sorts of things. But the financial market, I think, is going to be very interesting to see how it gets tapped. And, and beyond, you know, when you talk about quantum, everybody has their back of their head encryption and de-encryption. And you have to sort of get past that, that, you know, there's, there's some really interesting problems beyond, you know, crypto security and those sorts of things. The financial markets are always looking for patterns and things. Quantum is really good at trying to figure out patterns. And I say that not knowing exactly, you know, how that gets applied, but I think uh, that's something a lot of people can relate to. One of the things I like most about the financial sector applications is the solution doesn't have to be perfect. And right. they're still very excited about it because anything that's just 1% better is a lot of money. Yeah, you get to the first or second derivative of a pretty close, that's that's good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Are there any collaborations that you guys are pursuing that are making these uh, research endeavors possible? We're doing things on several levels. I mean, we've had a great partnership with IBM, certainly because of IBM ability in quantum computing, but IBM is also searching beyond, you know, what, what does this mean? What are the domains that are going to exploit this and so on? But we partner well within this region, with some of the regional folks on chips and other things like that. And we see that that's going to be a piece of quantum computing too, eventually the new chips that will help power it and so on. Uh, we've been working with some of the economic development folks on uh, what our president calls Quantum Valley. Uh, we've been working in this region to put together an accelerator for quantum and quantum computing where will help small companies get started and give them access to quantum computing and some expertise, but hopefully not get in their way of their creativity in terms of going to marketplace with interesting solutions. How do you see the next, you know, five plus years playing out? I think there's a lot of room for growth. If I look at the roadmap that you and your colleagues have put out, true error correction is going to make a huge difference. Hundreds of thousands of qubits is going to make a huge difference. How we do scheduling for the quantum computer and we allow multiple access, things like that, which are probably not even on some people's radar screens yet, is going to make a huge difference. How we start to see some application areas develop and, and need to be developed more is going to make a huge difference. I think being right at the, the center of that or the nexus of that activity is, is really quite exciting, quite exciting for our students, quite exciting for this community. And how do we keep moving that ball forward? And it's always interesting to me when people say, well, okay, what's it good for? I mean, like, what's the killer app that you got that you can just pull off your phone? I get that question this, a lot. Th you're right. This is this is what you, how you can use this. And I, I, I'm not sure there's one killer app, but I can talk to you about modeling, simulation, optimization, and where that all will go and where I think quantum can play in that. But it's going to be one of our students that comes along and says, this is, this is the thing that's really going to rock this thing. You know, the person that's really helped us fund this is one of the co-founders of NVIDIA, Curtis Preen. Curtis talks about when he came here, it was interactive computing on IBM mainframe that convinced him to come to RPI and convinced him to go on in his career. And he was one of three co-founders of NVIDIA. And I think Curtis was looking for where's the next co-founder of XYZ company in quantum computing right. that will get turned on by this because they're in at such an early stage. 
and all the problems weren't solved yet. The industries weren't formed yet, and there's a lot of work to do and a lot of growth, a lot of opportunity, a lot of challenges. It was great getting to sit down with John and talk about how quantum computing is affecting RPI from a bird's eye view. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking to a graduate student, Melvina, who is studying how to use quantum computing and the applications that it might have in her research in engineering. I think this is a really cool application area and one that I didn't know very much about before I started talking to her. So stick around for that and we'll see you next time.